You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audience. It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. Got my got two special guests in the building today. Got Kennedy Ross back today uh, on the show, and we got Connie Navarro. Rakena. Alfaro. Alfaro. <laughs> Alfaro. Alfaro. I'm sorry. I, I'm really bad with last names. That's so bad for me to be a journalist and bad with names. So I got to work with that. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Let's clap it up for Connie, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm good. so excited to be here. <laughs> thank you. You are, you are our last official guest of the show, of, of my show, of What's Out with Shemai Cook. I appreciate you for coming on today. Oh, I'm thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. This is our last show. We got to go out with a bang. Yeah, you know what I mean? We do. We gotta, we gotta go with the bangs. Speaking of bangs. <laughs> Speaking of bangs, first of all, we gotta start off some, with some light. Uh, you know, you've been uh, part of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, with uh, our department here at Central mm-hmm. and, um, and, and SGA. Talk about your experience of how uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, is uh, um, in your job, particular. Yeah, so. Um a lot of what I do now is pertaining to DEI a lot. Yeah. Um, now that I'm the SGA director, well, well finishing former. on my term, well, former, yeah, yeah. yeah former, <laughs> finishing on my term this week uh-huh. um, as an SGA director for DEI, I've been honored to honestly do so much for the department. I mean, we won Department of the Year at yes. the Eagles Choice Ch- Awards. Yes, so, I mean, well deserved. <laughs> People, they clap up at the awards. I, I heard. know. Yeah, and, and one thing I'm going to say is that we are that department. Yes. I mean, we y'all are. Department. Y'all ate it. Y'all ate it. How, is this? How <laughs> yeah. you ate it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I feel like part of my work, I don't want to give me all the props, but yeah. I feel like part of my work has gone into making sure the department has been well enough for. Um, the actual for the actual department um, I've been able to do so much for the department and overall I feel like right now I'm doing a lot so I just became president of um, RAICES which is the oh, Hispanic wow. Latinx Oregon campus gotcha. I'm so excited about that um, finishing up I'm Actually, I'm working with Marcus to hopefully be on the senior class council. Oh, good, so, good, good, good. Marcus um, Bates. Yes, yeah. I love Marcus. Marcus is great. He's yes, also my people. coworker, too, like he said on the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we call each other. We have this this uh, very familial relationship. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I feel like, you know, when we do work, we do work. Yeah. And then when we have fun, we have fun. Absolutely, so. no doubt. Yeah, so um, I've been able to, fi- I feel like with SGA now and me being a DEI director or finishing up my term, mm-hmm. I was a, I was actually able to bring a lot of the conversation, yeah. a DEI conversation that has not been in SGA, which yeah. is something I'm really proud of and I'm gonna continue to work for. Um, and I hope the next DEI director does a good job too of keeping it there. Uh, absolutely, you talk about SGA, right? Mm-hmm. You know, SGA is it's a lot of things they they say and behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I I get called out when I call. I get called a hater. I get called a, a, a what 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 else do I get called? A, a fan or whatever when I call people out when the truth to power. Mm-hmm. Uh, what or uh, from from. You know, behind the scene, from your perspective, yeah. how have SGA took in criticism? You know, because they, they sometimes they think people bash them just to bash them, but talk about how they take criticism. Um, I would say, like, based on what I've seen, we do take, we kind of take what's good and um, take in the criticism that can be improved on. And I always, I love criticism. I think it's important for us to have criticism. Yeah. Um, especially within SGA, you know, we are, we're, we're supposed to be working for the student body, essentially. Uh, some of them are. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to speak on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to speak on that. Um, <laughs> I would just speak with what I know that I'm able to control. And that's how really I've been taking it. Um, but I definitely say, I always try to take the negative you know we did a form recently earlier i think last semester we did like a um open form where we were able to actually have students kind of comment things about what needs to be improved on campus and we did take a lot of that um i was actually able to you know work on a transfer student program oh wow that um which a lot of transfer students were came out and i was so appreciative of that and it was probably one of my biggest programs and my best programs that i did with sga so I feel like we take it as we can and kind of work with what we can because 
again i think most people try to think that we can um do everything and sometimes it is really administrative thing i have seen yeah sometimes it is like it's really out of our hands we're we're working with administration too so you got to think about higher ups and how the the chain of command goes Mm -hmm. um which is something new that i didn't know you know i also was like damn sometimes we could improve on stuff like this but um, seeing how the chain of command works, sometimes it is it is really hard to get through administration. Sometimes, uh, sometimes was a lot of people that I see this is this is me just being a, a journalist and analyzing stuff. Some people just get into SGA um, just for the title, and they uh, put the work on other people. Mm. Uh, how have you seen that affect SGA as a whole? As a whole, okay. Um, I definitely say, like, you can tell who's really in it for in it, but, you know, each to each is their own. Um, you know, when I took on the position myself, like, I was committed because I know I wanted DEI to be represented more. Okay. And I felt like, um, and I even had told when we had our first meeting and I was actually there, I was like, I feel like DEI is not represented enough in our meetings. And so... Um, when it comes to race, ethnicity, or when it comes yeah, to gender, yeah, like, okay. like, yeah, like race, ethnicity, having other races as well, like double minorities on campus. So I'm a double minority, obviously. Yeah. I'm Hispanic, so it's it's really hard to see. You know, I'm I'm very proud. I'm actually the only Hispanic on the e-board, wow. so that's something that was like huge for me, and I feel like I was breaking a barrier for other di- double minorities to be able to, you know. Um, participate in SGA and be like, okay, I do have a say on campus and I'm able to also help the student body. And I even work, you know, you see my peers, they don't look like me. Yeah. But I have impacted students that don't look just like me who aren't. Well, you know you're, I mean? we're all people. That's the right. I think. I think that's the thing. I think people got to realize. I get DEI is a thing, and we, you did you just uh, just see how UNC got rid of DEI? In other yeah. Years? I'm gonna ask you a and question this is, about that. This is why I want to encourage students to vote too, because. You know, we're putting people, we're, when we're not voting, we're, we're letting these people do things like this, DEI. Yeah. So, we, you know, I've been in contact with our, you know, our DEI department and they've, you know, been telling me on terms of how things might shift in the fall. But, however, our main focus is to keep the centers open and that's what I'm really here for. And I w- I'm going to keep pushing for that in the fall too as well. Yeah, no no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, Kennedy, you got a question? Um... No, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, um, you, you ran, um, you know, in the in this semester for mm-hmm. uh, SGA uh, VP. Talk about your experience uh, with SGA and the whole election process. And uh, you didn't win, but uh, you ran a really, really great campaign. What's Thank some you. stuff that you have learned um, during this campaigning season? Yeah, so I definitely learned about myself and what type of person I am and just being overall confident and knowing that what I can bring to the table is something that I've learned in SGA as a director and then, you know, now taking it to a school level and a student body level. Um, I'm just insanely proud of the support I had. Mm. Um, it was insane when um, I did the meet and greet. I mean, even people were telling me like, Oh, I, I remember when you did the meet and greet, like the other day I went to career professional development and they were like, didn't you run? And I was like, yeah, I did. And they were like, the whole, like the whole student center was roaring because you were on the mic. And I just remember how much you had the crowd. And I was wow. like, I was just very amazed with how many people actually support me. And actually the students that were able to, you know, when I was, even when I'm walking through the campus, they're like, I could tell you're genuine and like Mm -hmm. you want to actually make a change so um that was very heartwarming and i feel like a lot of my experience in the campaign i mean kennedy was part of my campaign team (laughs) she was part of my campaign team my marketing team it was great i had people who genuinely supported me who pushed me kennedy's the reason actually also you know um she kept telling me if girl if you don't do it if you don't do it (laughs) um so I just feel like I needed people in my corner to be able to push me to be a better, like, to be a better me. And I feel like my better leader. Yeah, Yeah. better leader, everything. Like, my confidence has gone up. And it's something that even, you know, my family members have noticed, too. They're like, oh, my God, your confidence level has gone up insane. And it's, you're you're so sure of yourself. And so I just want to continue supporting students 
um, people who look like me, yeah. who might not, you know, who might not think it's not possible for them to run because they're non-Greek or nothing, you know, nothing against the Greeks. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm friends with Greeks, so it's like, you know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You just led me into my next question. <laughs> SGA, SGA, you know, and that's I got a lot of flack for this last mm-hmm. week. Uh, well, in the past few weeks. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, it, it seems like an SGA, in, in the bigger leadership roles, mm-hmm. it seems like you you have to be Greek. You got to be in a certain chapter of a certain fraternity um, mm-hmm. in certain things. How has that, you know, has that, you know, detained some people from running or how has that shaping like ruined a culture vibe in SGA? Talk, talk about that, Connie. Um, I feel like oftentimes many students who are not like very active or students I've spoken with, even after the election, they were like, you know, they really thought it was a Greek thing. Um, you know, like you were saying in your last show, like Greek thing, Greek life in general, D9 is so important. Um, and I'm never going to, you know, not give it its place because it deserves its place Absolutely, here on, yes. as, a, as an HBCU yeah. culture and everything. But I feel like, um, you know, certain aspects of Greek life really did kind of biased the votes. Mm. Um, and so I'm all about non- non-biased votes and trying to give like a very partial um, election. And I feel like in some sense it did had a lot to do, um, you know, coming from just a student who was a student body previously and then somebody, you know, coming in, uh, you know, coming into an HBCU and seeing how a lot of the people who are in power are Greeks, you know, yep. power to your power Greek, to, yes. you know what I mean? No like doubt. that's a hard process. Can't even imagine what it is to be, you know, <laughs> somebody a Greek and doing all these other things and being just so active on campus. But however, I feel like it really does discourage a lot of students, yeah. you know, and it discourages students from actually trying to vote yep. too. Cause this is like, okay, at the end of the day, I already know who's going to win. <laughs> Um, At this point, so, yeah, it, it's it's like that, but it just it, feels sad. The history doesn't lie, but yeah, uh, yeah. And I just it feels sad because you want the student to actually be able to feel like they have a voice on campus, and have a fair democracy. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, with that, I can only really speak on my behalf. Yeah, um, speak for the student body because uh-huh. I feel like I I accurately represent what the student body feels um, because I've been there and I know what it is to be a student body and seeing kind of being frustrated sometimes with the fact that a lot of things might not change yeah. or feel like maybe things could improve on campus. So. How do you think SGA and, you know, uh, SEAL can change that to make sure that um, it's not just Greek students winning? How, and, and when it comes to SGA and these leadership roles, how do you think, what should they do to make, to make it seem like a fair democracy? Well, I definitely think, you know, I did give my suggestions to SEAL and, you know, with things that happened on the election, particularly on the election night, you know, um, I did give my suggestions as someone who was, you know, coming from a different part of not being Greek and also just somebody who was a candidate and how I felt and went through the whole process. I felt like I ran a fair and clean campaign and... You know, whether whatever happened that night, I'm still proud of myself for what I did. Mm -hmm. And like I told them, I was like, I just really think you guys should kind of separate the two things because they should be two separate things. Like Greek life should be its own thing. It should have its own time during the semester. Mm -hmm. And then elections and everything should be in a very different manner. And the way it was ran particularly Mm. was... It was clashed. It was clashed, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, It wasn't fair to certain candidates. Yeah, so... Overall, I'm very happy about my campaign. Yeah. I did what I did, and mm-hmm. I, you know. Do you plan to run again? Because you're a junior, right? Um, I'm actually going into senior year, so I won't be able to run again. Ah, <laughs> That's the reason why ah, I did okay. it the most. Um, so I did it the most because I was like, I'm going to regret it later. Gotcha. Um, I had the, you know, feeling in the back that I want in, in my soul that I wanted to do it. And coming from a good place, um, I even had already had a plan as to how my administration was going to run. Got you. But you know that's that's okay because yeah. you know what is meant to be will happen. Yeah. Um, and everything happens for a reason. It does. Yeah. It happens for a reason. And you know, my sister was there actually for the election night. Yeah. Um, the the pageant, the night of the pageant, yeah. and my sister was just saying like. Um, you know, you never know. This could have been like something that was necessary to happen for this school to realize its ways. Maybe they were doing something that you never knew 
could change. Yeah. And, you know, also on top of that, you're like, you're paving, you're paving the way for other students. Again, for my community specifically, like, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I had my entire community back, you know, supporting me and yeah. feeling like they felt so proud of me for just even attempting because, again, I'm the only Hispanic that ran. And I think I'm the only Hispanic who's ever run, actually, wow. on, on this <laughs> actual campaign. So it was it was very interesting to see how people interacted with me because, you know, I'm obviously not black, but, um, you know, I come from minority background, too, so I know... I know sometimes we all have our different struggles. Um, and so I think it was very important for my community to know, like, they can do it too. Um, they just are equally important on this campus as well, and they have a spot on campus, and that they should have a leader who also represents them too. Uh, right. What's next for you? I know you said next year you are a senior. Uh, what's yeah. next for you going into uh, next next year, mm-hmm. next, next school year? So I'm still... <laughs> I'm looking into some some things that I want to do. Um, it's very interesting because senior year, it, you know, I'm also thinking about my post grad life and how that's going to turn out. Um, but for sure, I'm going to still be doing DEI stuff. Okay. I'm always going to be there. That's always that's my heart and passion and my soul right there. Um, so I'm going to be, like I said, I was pre- I'm president now of Raices, which is the Latinx org on campus. Gotcha. Hoping to be on the senior class council, hopefully um, working alongside Marcus as well. Okay. Kind of helping him because I want our senior year to be the best senior year possible. Um, Absolutely. Have that experience. Um, still, you know, work with within SGA, but not so directly. Um, yeah. And also just doing student orgs and overall having, just enjoying and soaking in the senior year yeah. of gra- undergrad because it's going by really fast. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Connie Regrier or Faro. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Clap it up for her. <laughs> uh, up next, we're going to look at the best of uh, What's Hot with Shamai Cook. It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I love you for listening. Uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audience.